How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to my series, introducing to you the players participating in CT Mass Battle 2, which you can find all of the information for here in this overlay, and you can catch live this Saturday, May 4th, 2019. Today, I will be talking about the Last Chance Qualifier winner, Alex Smith. Alex Smith was invited to last year's CT Mass Battle, and he returns again, having qualified at the event provided by Great Value Smash just last week. Alex Smith is no stranger to high-level tournament play. You can find him going back to Guilty Gear, Accent Core, uh, way back when I started in the scene. He was a tournament vet playing Street Fighter IV. Guilty Gear, like I mentioned, Marvel vs. Capcom, currently championing MK11. And you can obviously find him playing some Street Fighter V. As I'd already mentioned, he won Nemesis 82 last week, but I've got some other... Uh, comparatively recent tournament placings of his. At Nemesis 81, provided by Great Value Smash, he came in third place, losing to Island Boy and Groovy Mango. And at Nemesis 74, his last recent appearance, he took first place, losing only to Scumbag Marco, but still bringing it back in Grand Finals. His last five attendances at Balance Patch events, brought to you by Traveling Controller, at the March 1st event, he took second, losing to Burkish in Winners and Losers. On February 8th, he took 7th, losing to Draken and Lucky D. February 1st, he took 9th, losing to KO the Poet and Zaf. At the monthly on January 28th, he also placed in 7th, losing to Ham Bam and Zaf. And on January 18th, he placed in 9th, losing to Andre and Badstone. I don't have it written down here, but I do know for a fact that he got uh, 2nd or 3rd at the, I believe, 1st Traveling Controller Awaken Qualifier Week. But, so... Ultimately, a player who's got a lot of tournament experience, both in general and against a lot of the players that he will be participating against this coming weekend. And so what I have here for us are actually two matches that he played from Nemesis 82. I have a winner's side bracket match between him and Great Value Smash's Cheeseburger, another player who was invited to attend last year. And then I've got the beginning of the grand final set, which he plays against Desnair. So, we can hop right into this. Once again, provided thanks to Great Value Smash to go into this. So, as I alluded to, Alex Smith, uh, or perhaps I didn't allude to it, Alex Smith plays about 50-50 between uh, Jury and Karen. Usually likes to switch. I actually talked to him a little bit earlier today. Let me turn this down a little to make sure that it's not too loud. Talked to him a little bit earlier today, and it's it's not necessarily a matchup specific thing. It's sometimes it's flavor of the day. There's some stuff that's matchup specific. He had alluded to not liking to play nice jump in there, not liking to play jury into boxer, for example. And one of the things that's really good about Alex's jury, and I found in digesting both of these sets because I watched them back a little bit before going into this, is he's really good at conditioning you to allow for his explosive forward movement. Uh, with Jury, you have that standing light kick, and I believe AJ says it on commentary here as well, but he describes the character as sticky, and I think that's a good word for it. She, that standing light kick reaches pretty far, and he'll do standing light kick, micro walk, standing light kick, micro walk, and it makes it really hard to try to pick a moment to either counter poke or to tech the throw without risking, you know, getting hit by, you know, standing medium kick or standing roundhouse confirm or what have you. And the way Alex uses her other standing kick normals, like your standing medium kick, is very effective in reinforcing this game plan because after one to two standing light kicks, he's at a perfect range to poke with the tip of that standing medium kick. And he'll establish that, which forces them or conditions them, rather, to respect additional pressure after blocking one to two standing light kicks. And as he enforces that across the game, you see that he will, as he widens that gap, eventually gets you to the point of establishing that take throw game. Yep, standing light kick right at the range there. Yep, a nice jump back here from Cheeseburger, trying to make something happen for himself. Nice confirm off that uh, low forward. Really nice low forward for him, too. There we see a little bit of that standing light kick, tick throw game already established. Side switch from Cheeseburger. The commentators here question what had gone on, but I think 
that was simultaneously the fact that Alex delay tech allowed for cheeseburger just to side switch and take himself a little bit farther away from the corner. I don't know. Maybe it was. Let's check the plus frame. Safe. Nice tick throw. Good. Or tick. Uh, wow. Tech like throw, a rather. Slowly walking forward. Really good to be able to and, and see Cheeseburger trying to walk into that forward space and still really establishing that standing medium kick as a threat. What's up, Ernest? Hello from Alex. And now we see it's already working, right? Look, two. Uh, throw tech there that time from Cheeseburger, but Alex is now feeling confident in his ability to dash forward and get behind this dash pressure. Hello? Gets teched and then immediately back to that standing medium kick. Now we see that micro walk. Look at that. Three standing leg kicks and a little bit of a micro walk in between each of those leg kicks. Stuck in the corner now being pressured. Challenging that forward walk though. Let's see here. Okay, Cheeseburger getting wise to it a little bit. Getting mauled a little bit on wake up here is Alex Smith. Back throw. Oh, that does get the stun. But now both players sitting on tons of resources going into this next game. Or next round, rather. Challenging that forward walk dash there. We saw Cheeseburger go to that forward dash uh, quite a bit in that last round. So Alex getting wise to it a little bit, buffering off that crouching light punch. He's been getting hit on wake up a lot here, and I find myself wondering what Alex is doing in this situation. He's, he's not respecting the wake up. Nice anti-air there. Another nice anti-air. One thing that I find that's really good about Alex Smith, and we'll see it a little bit more in the next set against Desnair, is his willingness to go to air-to-airs just to get the damage. You know, you don't necessarily get Oki off of an air-to-air. -air. You don't get to reset momentum like you would with a normal based anti-air, or maybe you don't get a ton of damage like you would in an uppercut, and maybe when you land you still get some sort of frame advantage. But he'll get the damage and just stifle the situation and then still land in that mid-screen spacing and just be content to play neutral. Going for the uppercut anti-air there that time, though. And I like that. Jabbing through the shimmy attempt there. That's something I've seen in watching a couple of these nice bait on the uppercut. But so jabbing on the throw bait attempt is something I've seen in... He's not the only player that I've seen in some of these videos do that, where in the throw bait attempt, they're more willing to challenge with buttons than they are with throw. The reversal there from Cheeseburger. Got to do it. So if she dashes, you'll see it's farther now that there's a loop in Oh, nice. Who does? Is that nice? Ooh. Oh, doesn't die. Doug Greedy with the meter. Yep, just challenges the walk forward. <laughs> yeah, so if Alex stays wise in this set to the way that Cheeseburger... Jesus, what a scramble. Challenges the walk forward again. This is something that, as long as he's staying wise to this, it doesn't seem as though he can really lose. That cross-up was so deep. And a nice jump in over the fireball. Challenges the walk forward. Cheeseburger does this time in the back throw. That's critically important. Hit with the overhead, but a drop. Alex is turning that butter through it. you got to know that he's going to be ready for that. And the walk forward again. Meaty off the fireball. What's he going to do? And the instant overhead. Alex Smith, back in Street Fighter 4, played Abel. So you've got to believe that he's got the gimmicks. He's going to know the weird, this will work once, and i got to know when to pull it out stuff. And he's so good about only pulling it out in those moments when it really matters. Nice anti-air there. You don't get to neutral jump at me for free. Oh, that was looks like a whiffed buffer off the standing light kick, but it doesn't even matter because he can activate the V-Trigger off of it. Oh, jeez. Just getting mauled. I mean, what does Cheeseburger do in this situation? Tech throw. Playing really patiently. Nice whiff punish. The dash back. That's something you'll see Alex do a lot. And once again, this is another thing that we'll see a little bit more of in the Desnair set. But he will dash in and out a ton. And going to the standing overhead there again. He, I think that's literally the only time he's done that in that set. But So something else about Alex is his movement, in general his movement is, is really good. But what you'll find sometimes, I feel like you can tell when Alex is really feeling himself and when he really feels in the pocket, 
is when you see Alex doing stuff like dash out, dash back in, rather than dealing with walks. Even he'll do it with Karen, who's a character who has a really good walk speed, and he'll still do it. So what did it look like here? What was it when he won? Well, he conditioned the opponent to respect his forward momentum. Good frame traps uh, established off that standing light kick. Great use of the standing medium kick. He's got the gimmicks when he needs to pull them out. And critically, against Cheeseburger there, he stifled any forward momentum that Cheeseburger was able to get because Cheeseburger had to try to establish a largely similar game of normal micro-walk forward to try to make something happen into some frame traps. And if the, the traps are wide enough, he was finding the gaps. I think that's a, a pretty good assessment of what went on in that match. So here we're going to be switching to the Grand Finals, which is ultimately how Alex is even here to be talked about in this conversation today, which he has between Desnair, who is another player who was invited to last year's. Sorry about that weird technical uh, mix-up with my capture stuff. But here we're going to jump right into the grand final set. So in this set, and depending on the time, because I don't want this video to run too, too long, and this set in itself is already as long as some of the videos that I've been doing for these players, but Desnair wins this set 3-1, I think, for the original set, dropping Alex into losers for the bracket reset. I'm certainly going to talk about the loser set. We'll see how long it is when I'm done talking about it, because I don't want to keep you guys too, too long. But Sticking with the jury here, he does end up making the switch to Karen at a certain point in this set. One of the things that ends up being a big deal in this set that Alex Smith really struggles with, and in fact the Karen switch does a lot to help him through, is that he really struggles to deal with that dive kick from Zeku getting out of the corner. Jesus, that cross-up was ridiculous. Gets hit. Corner switch combo here from Desnair. Bites on the frame trap after that standing light kick. That's the type of thing, you know, especially if you were watching his set against Cheeseburger, you saw that he was challenging those micro walks after standing light kick. And that's something that maybe Desnair kept in mind and accordingly kept those frame traps tight to blow Alex Smith up for trying to do anything too, too cheeky. Safe there. No whiff punish on the crouching strong. Out of the corner again, air to air trade. There's the overwhelming story of the set ends up being him trying to figure out what to do once he gets Desnair in the corner. Because Alex Smith's corner pressure is really good. He's got a great game sense about him to keep sense of exactly how stressed you feel. And with him just kind of being able to get out, it makes it really hard for him to keep stuff going. That was so sick. Uses the V-trigger dash to cross him up and trip guard him on landing. That was really sick from Desner. I know this set's about Alex Smith, but Desner plays really, really well in this set. I do, I do hope this doesn't run long enough for me to be able to do the whole set. I might just push in anyway. Yeah, nice jump in there. Challenges off the jump in somehow, but Desner challenging with that crouching jab. I feel like that crouching jab is pretty important uh, because it shows that Desner is cognizant of Alex Smith leaving gaps, the types of gaps that you associate with these micro walks. And it shows that he's being cognizant of it. He's keeping it in mind. Air to air, failing again for Alex Smith as Desner gets out of the corner again. Finds the cross up to switch sides. It has to be reversal there. Doesn't want to lose corner. Doesn't want to lose the situation. And another failed air to air. That was a sick whiff. throw attack. That's a really nice hit confirm. He can sort of make this happen off the next hit if he really wants to. Oh. Keeps that V-skill charged. Limits Desner's ability to hinder his forward momentum. Oh. Hits him with the tricky stuff. I alluded in the other winner's side match that Alex played that He's got a good sense of, of pulling out the gimmicks, but Desner gimmicking Alex a little bit there. Nice jump in. He's landed a lot of jump ins. Another thing that's good about Alex is he seems to have a really good sense of when you're going to throw that fireball. We're seeing against Cheeseburger, he got 
you know, one or two really nice jump-ins. And here now he's like two good jump-in combos around a fireball. Tons of damage here off this stun combo. This is just a great round for him. Frame trap, light kick into low forward. Low forward's a pretty low risk, you know, if he catches him standing or... He doesn't re necessarily lose a whole lot if it's blocked, but, you know, just a little better than a, a standing throw bait attempt, you know, if he just needs a pixel. The dive kick again. And just so much mileage here, Desnair getting out of, just hindering this forward momentum. You see Alex sort of trying to really bully and brute force his way in. It doesn't really work for him. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he switches to Karen here. I actually don't recall if he takes a game or not. Um, I watched the set a little bit earlier today to get acclimated, but I don't remember right this second. As I eyeball my notes, he doesn't. He makes the switch to Karen, but I don't believe it works. But we see the beginnings of an adjustment, which I think is really cool uh, and makes this set particularly interesting to watch. Because it's not necessarily a mauling. We see in this set the justification behind him making the Karen switch. And I will say, of all the players who were invited or participating in this event, uh, CT Mass Battle 2, Alex is the only one that I really associate with playing multiple characters. Zap's been playing around with Birdie a bit lately, and he was talking to me about how he's got that as a counterpick for CTP, CPT, rather, kind of stuff. But I still don't necessarily associate him with Birdie in quite the way that I do with Sagat. And the same can really be said of virtually every player in attendance, except Alex here, who to this day still plays Karen and Jerry about 50-50. I think despite the fact that he drops this set, I think it's the strength of this character switch really helps to shift the momentum of the game. Gets hit by the, uh, the Gram there. But still the, uh, a very similar game plan here in bringing this out. Uh, slightly better off of the low forward, better Oki, better meter gain. But he can still do that really sticky stuff, that really pressure. That's, that is the thing that I think makes this character switch so good for Alex. So he can largely play a sort of similar game plan here with Karen, where he can really try to establish the throw game once he's used his great pokes to hinder your ability to suppress his forward movement. He can still do the really sticky standing light kick, micro walk forward, tick throw type of game plan. Karen is one of the best characters in the game right now, and we see Punk performing, you know, amazingly well across CPT events right now. And a lot of it, you know, back in the day in, in Season 2 or whatever it was when Punk was last really, really dominant, I felt like the reason for it was was that Punk was playing around the throw game completely differently than a lot of other people. And largely, I think the reason, the one of the big reasons he ended up losing to Tokido that Evo was because Tokido was one of the only players that just committed to taking the throw. But here what we just saw is, we saw how many times Alex lost corner and lost out on damage or a trade because he could not, he didn't have an answer to the dive kick. And here we see it in neutral jump medium punch, or neutral jump, I believe that's medium punch, because later on we see the, the target combo off of it. And this alone allows him to keep this corner position and adequately challenge Zeku. And if he wants a reversal out, like a proper reversal, he has to switch back over to old Zeku, which doesn't, if I recall correctly, doesn't have a three frame, so it's harder for him to suppress these micro walks forward that he's trying to do. So he's forcing this situation where that's not a get-out-of-jail-free card for Disney just off of his ability to answer that question differently because Karen has a different tool set. I think that ends up being really, really interesting. You know, did we did we see Desnair have to V-reversal really at all in the last two games? He's still challenging the forward momentum really well, which is... I think the other big piece of why Alex ends up dropping this set is that he has a hard time. I think what we see is, and I, I had this in my notes somewhere, but he's still hungry for dashing, but we're also seeing sort of the beginnings of 
Alex establishing pokes in mid range. What a cheeky little reset to make this happen. Oh, so that's another one of those really good game sense sort of moments where the overhead was such a, a brilliant answer to bring out there. Although there's something to be said that, of course, the overhead comes out there. But just unfortunate for him that the slide ends up trading favorably for Desnair there. Back to mid screen. Nothing to really worry about. I would have just supered to take the chip, but then I wouldn't have midair to save me uh, half a meter. And you don't want to do that yep. in the So, Desner does end up winning this game. I definitely have time. Desner does end up winning this game uh, and resetting the bracket here on Alex. But Alex takes the set, obviously, to ultimately qualify for this event. Nice anti air jab. God, her sweep is so good. And there we see there's still hunger in Alex Smith's dashing in his forward movement here. But there we see a little bit of it, light kick, light kick, into crouching medium kick. You know, you're not allowed to walk back and generate the space, and you're also not allowed to hit buttons there. That's something that I also saw. Uh, I'll stop this for a second to, to mention this. In fact, if I go back, where does it come out? Right here. This is something that he does a little bit more after the bracket reset, too. It comes up a couple more times. Is him going to that reversal in these negative frame situations because he knows that Desner is going to take his turn. Desner ends up not necessarily respecting it. Sitting on a lot of bar here is Desner. That trade works out decently well for Alex because it gets rid of the V-trigger. Late on challenging the forward momentum there. Uh, that time is Alex. I don't think this one kills. Oh, and then into the overhead. I, I just watched this part uh, just before I started recording this. Yeah, so, so what did it look like here when he lost? Well, Alex is trying to leave these gaps so he can micro walk. He's trying to leave these gaps so he can give you the room to hang yourself. And Desner's not really having it. You know, walking backward and challenging, or even just challenging in some of these gaps. And critically, Alex is a dash heavy player, and Desner is challenging with those crouching strongs. He's getting so many of these crouching strong combos. We saw a little bit of an adjustment here, but also the ability, the fact that Desner spent most of this first set able to virtually freely get out of the corner. Whoop. Phone blowing up. He's able to virtually get out of the corner freely and it's only in this last game that we see the foundation of Alex adjusting to that to be able to keep the corner and force Desner to have to spend other resources for that scroll forward however far I need to go oh, not very far at all to get to the first part of the bracket reset nice. wow. wow the cheeky stuff that's a that's a big that's trade for Desner and Desner in a great situation here but Oh, bites on wake up there. This is big. Bites in the throw bait, but drops the tanko. That's unfortunate. And the air to air again. We see. I feel like Alex will like this character for this air to air situation. Oh no, drops the stun, but there it is. Yeah, just the just the air to air situations and the way it seems as though he's able to anti air against Desner better here when Desner does go to the air with Karen. I feel like that's what's making it work for him. I cannot believe that that didn't work for Alex. No. Air to air now working for Desner there. Oh, God. A little bit of overcommitment there from Desner and gets a nice counter hit combo for his trouble, does Alex? Just like that, stuck in the corner. Finds the slide on trying to move forward. Oh, how did that not cross up? Oh, nice tick throw off the V dash. It has to burn the V reversal here. Challenges the walk forward, and this ends up being a nice story for him. Attempt at a standing reset there. He doesn't have very much life left here to bargain with. Oh, 
greedy overhead. Catches the beginnings of a jump forward, it looked like. Yeah, gets the round on the board. It also seems as though Alex, one of the adjustments he's making is going to the air more, not just for air-to-airs, but for offense as well, rather than necessarily trying to play the ground game. Nice air throw there from Desner. Ooh, bites on the uh, the throw bait. He's sitting on a lot of resources here. Does he kill? I'm pretty sure that kills. So during the animation, I'll, I'll talk about this. We're seeing him jumping more in general than I feel like he was doing with Jerry. I mean, he's two games away. And challenging Desnair to meet him in the air or to play around anti-airs, which, you know, young Zeku doesn't necessarily have amazing ones. He's got some good normals. Old Zeku's got the upper cup, but we've not seen him go to it anymore. Or in general, rather. Oh, gets the throw. I mean, that's good enough. That's a nice challenge on the air-to-air -air there. Stuck in the corner. Finds the anti-air. Here we see we already see Desnair a little bit more afraid to go to that dive kick because it's not worked out for him. And by forcing him to stay on the ground, Alex is already able to establish this offense. Look at that round. Yep, air to airs again. There, what did I say? I looked over at my capture as if there was going to be an audience there. What did I say? You can kind of see when Alex is starting to feel it. The way he moves on the screen changes. The way he plays changes. And it doesn't even necessarily matter to me in this moment that he got jabbed out of it. That's a decision Alex ma makes when he feels hot. Yep. Nice big jump in here. Spend some bar. Reset. Again, that time it works. Finds the stun. Oh, he finds the extra bar to kill here. Yeah, this is this is Alex Warm. You see that, that crazy movement. Karen's walk speed already so good. She's got a pretty solid dash, too. But what's gone on now up until this point that's meant that Desnair is not challenging these dashes in the way he was. Alex started playing more of a mid-range game. We've not seen him try to really go for tick throws. When he's getting the throws, they're kind of just raw throws. He's not going for tick throws a whole lot. And he's going to jump ins. Fundamentally changing the approach on the ground. Now Desnair is watching for jumps, trying to meet him in the air with air-to-airs or preemptively anti-air him with normals on the ground, and this fast dash coming at him is not something he's necessarily prepared for in this moment. Nice trade on the air-to-air. Once again, no tick throw, just going for the throw. And two dashes in, once again, unchallenged. What a whiff punch. Now we're back to the tick throw. Back throw there from Desnair, but challenges the forward movement does Alex now. And once again, we see, oh, Jesus, how did that? That's cheap. Oh, not as cheap as that was. Jesus. Should be killed. Yeah. But Desnair hasn't gone to dive kick since, you know, that last game before the grand finals reset, really. Alex... Shut that right down. Finally challenging the forward momentum again is Desnair. But that wide jump arc seems as though it's giving him trouble. He keeps crossing himself up in situations where he doesn't necessarily want to and ending up in the corner. Oof. I say that, but it's obviously working out for him. Desnair putting a fast game up on the board for himself 2-1. to one. I had forgotten how close this bracket reset was. I think I watched this whole set twice before recording this. Yeah, so Alex makes the switch back to Jury to finish out the game now that Desnair has gotten wise to his character. 
And this is something, once again, that is unique about Alex in this. I'll scroll forward a moment while we wait for this. This is something unique to Alex in this event. No other player, I feel, really has a character that they play at the same level with the same intensity and with the same frequency that Alex does with Jerry. Charging all that stuff. Playing a little bit more reserved here than he was when he was playing Jerry earlier. Stalking the fireballs a little bit more. Dashing back and going in behind the fireball. I think this is a crucial adjustment because what he's doing is he's recognizing that his Jerry didn't work because he couldn't play at the speed that he wanted to and he failed to sufficiently discourage Desnair from hitting buttons. By now choosing to go in behind the fireball, it's giving him that extra bit of hesitation to be able to play the game that he wants to play. Nice trade on the fireball. Asleep at the wheel a little bit there, but finds the anti-air. Jeez, gets the crouching jab, but what a good sweep. We see, does he do it again? Yep, backs off, charges the fireballs. What a... <laughs> footsies. Yep. Going for the meaty. Instant overhead. Desnair ready for it. That's another thing that Desnair was really good at. This is, I think, the second time in the set now that, that Alex Smith has gone for the gimmicky stuff to try to clinch something out, and Desnair's been ready for it. Yep. Charging all these fireballs. He And not even trying to contest the dive kick, because he understands now that what he needs to do if he's going to make this work, what a big conversion. Yep, smart of Desner there, too, to recognize... Jesus, and he's dead. Smart of Desner there to recognize that going for super in that situation wouldn't have been worth it. But, so, in general, Alex's approach to playing Jerry now, as opposed to the first set, is so different. He's playing slower, he's covering his approach with the fireballs. And he's tightened up his meaties a little bit. We saw a couple of situations where he was you know, doing the frame-perfect meaty kind of stuff and not giving Desner the ability to do anything and converting that into really decent damage. And this comes both completely different to the way he played Jerry in the first half of Grand Finals, as well as completely different to the way he had been playing Karen up until this point. Desner effectively has now played against three different characters from Alex Smith. Two different approaches to playing Jerry. Wow, finds the air to air. Jesus. The intensity and the speed with which Alex will play when he's in the pocket. Nuts. Tight frame traps again. We see he's not going for these micro walks. Desner's already established he's not having any of it. Waiting behind this fireball, charging the V skill so that he can challenge Desner for trying to do anything cheeky. Oh, he wanted to anti air with it, but didn't end up working out for him. Delay tech, I imagine, to get out of that needy setup. Still alive. That's a good view reversal. Once again, see, abusing the minus two because he is confident Desner is going to take his turn. That's two for two now. Both times in hugely important moments. Buffering, and he's tuned into Desner's forward momentum there as well. Oh. Desner perhaps making the adjustment, or Alex falling back into his old tricks. Just going for the fireball there. It works. Oh, wow, that air-to-air -air was such an early air, air I think that was his attempt at playing around dive kick again, because we're seeing Desner going back to that again. Oh, that's a big crush counter sweep. Oh, and he just gets it, doing something. You see the hype from Alex. So, that ended up being a really cool grand final set. I know for most, if not all, of these other players, I'm ending on their loss. I'm going deep into their win and then deep into their loss. And for Alex, I went a little different, uh, partly because... You know, spending a little bit more time exploring both of his characters and just the way that his ability to switch characters and play both characters really effectively really influenced the trajectory of this grand final set.
in a way that we don't necessarily see from a lot of the other guys. So what are the ultimate takeaways? Well, Alex Smith is a player with tournament nerves of steel, actually, in the, the post-interview he has with Ed. He talks about how he spent this whole tournament trying not to think about the stakes of it because he figured the second he did that it was going to n- kind of neuter his performance. But we see a, a really capable player who is capable of both putting the gas all the way down, but he can also take it back and make these adjustments in these longer sets, like we saw in Desner here. What it looks like when he loses is somebody finds the, the proper spots to stop his forward offense. They pick up on when he's trying to take throw versus when he's trying to play footsies, and they're able to slow that stuff down and just generally beat him on that ground game. And if you do that and you have the ability to keep him out of the air, it's going to be limiting And he's going to have to go to something else. Like we saw here, where in that first grand final set, what it really came down to is he wasn't really able to get his offense started more often than not. Desner had his number. What we see in this player, though, however, is the ability to make the adjustments that comes with these years of tournament experience that he has. And I think it was really fascinating to look at this grand final set in particular and see the adjustments that he made across the two sets to be able to take this tournament ultimately and be able to join us on May 4th. And that's going to be it for me talking about Alex Smith. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all tune in on May 4th to see how this all works out for Alex and all the rest of these participants. So thanks for watching, and bye.